Welcome to Sibspot. Today's featured Reddit stories are from Petty Revenge. Story one is by Not Outrageous. Let me tell you something before you go. I spent almost 50 years in between a conflict between my mom and her sister. Aunt was your typical holy roller who believed her poop didn't stink because she went to church every week. She had the typical holier-than-thou attitude about everything. She put on an I'm-such-a-wonderful-person appearance to everyone, but at home she was wicked to my mom. My mom's, quote, great sin, quote, was abandoning her family to enlist in the military. Her sister never forgave her for forming her own life and spent the rest of her life making my mom feel like trash. My mom was a very passive person, so she never dared stand up for herself. I was five at the time when Aunt came to town, and even at that age, I quickly saw how nasty she was to my mom. I watched my mom cower around her, so logically, I feared her too. She took offense to my fear and did what any rational adult would do in that situation. She decided to get even with a five-year-old and turn her wrath on me. Some of it was petty, like buying my siblings expensive gifts and I would get a bottle of Old Spice or a bar of soap. Some was more direct. She would yell at me and belittle me anytime we stayed at her house. I hid the abuse from my parents since she was a regular babysitter. When I got older and didn't need a babysitter, I was able to reduce contact. She then switched from direct attacks to spreading lies about me to neighbors and anyone who would listen. When I was 17, I found out she told all of our neighbors I was a Satanist. When I got married, a switch flipped and she decided I was now her favorite nephew and acted like we were always best friends and she didn't spend 20 plus years abusing me. Well, 25 year old me didn't fall for it, but I decided to play along. Why? I was cynical and I knew how to hold a grudge. She was unmarried, childless, and loaded. So I spent the next two decades acting like I could stand to be in the same room with her. I would buy her thoughtful gifts which were always whatever was on clearance at the religious bookstore. She would go on about how spiritual I was and would shower us with gifts and expensive meals. Her wrath was no longer directed at me, but she doubled the venom spit at my mom. She made it her mission to get me to turn against my mom. She made up ridiculous events that never happened, like my mom trying to smother their mother in her sleep, or her repeatedly trying to push her down the stairwells. Through all of it, my mom took her abuse, never standing up for herself. It killed her that her sister hated her, but she never stopped trying to rebuild their relationship. Time marched on and Aunt was diagnosed with a terminal disease. In her final months, she decided to stick the knife in one last time and give it a good twist. She announced she was going no contact with her sister. My mom was devastated. Through 60 plus years of abuse, she still loved her sister and wanted to be there to care for her. Aunt denied that and it broke her. I tried to talk her into letting my mom visit, but she claimed she had talked to her priest and he told her that my mother didn't deserve forgiveness and being such a strong Catholic as I was, I should respect that. My mom's only comfort was that her son was there to care for her sister, so I did my duty and was with her almost every day until she passed. In her final days, she was very weak and couldn't really talk. Just whispering one or two words here or there was all she could manage. Knowing she was powerless to protest, I delivered what would be my second biggest F you to her. I called my mom and told her she was welcome to come and visit whenever she wanted. My mom was elated. She rushed over immediately and returned every day. She would sit there for hours holding her hand and talking to her sister, so happy to be reunited. My aunt would stare daggers at me while I smiled back. My mom was blissfully unaware that her sister didn't want her there and so got to be with her sister during her final days. A huge weight was lifted off her shoulders as they had finally reconciled. I never told my mom that her sister never actually told me she could come, and that secret will go to my grave. On the last day, it was clear she was in her final moments. It was just her and I in the room, so I leaned in close and delivered my farewell message. 
I spoke loudly and clearly to make sure she would hear me. I want you to know, I'm an atheist. Her eyes told me she understood, and within a minute she was gone. I'm not sure if my message pushed her over the edge, but I kind of hope so. Oh, and thanks to her generosity and her will, I'm somehow managing to go on without her. Petty revenge that happens over decades is insane. You have to dedicate tens of years of your life to this petty revenge. But if she was that awful of a person, I guess maybe she deserved it. That takes some serious dedication, some that I would never have. Our next story is by Amstroid. My mother kept donating me junk, so I hid 200 ducks in her house. I'm not sure if this is a petty revenge or even a revenge due to the outcome, but it started as a way to have some petty revenge to my mother. My mother is notorious for giving me junk. A few examples from last month. Address stamps with my information on them from when I lived at home 15 years ago. A dentist appointment card with appointments from 2006. About 30 keys. Just 30 random keys without knowing where they fit on. USB sticks and memory cards ranging from a few megabytes to max 2 gigs. I love my mother and I know she doesn't mean this in a bad way, but I have told her to stop it so many times to no avail. When my father was alive, it wasn't as bad, but now I really have to be careful when I or my wife go over or we have another box of junk to take home. She is still cleaning up the house since the death, so I understand where it all comes from, but some things are clearly meant for the bin instead of donating it to me. But last month, I really had had enough and bought 200 plastic ducks online. When she was on holiday recently, I planned to take my revenge and hid them all over her house. And by everywhere, I mean everywhere. Some are very visible, like in the middle of the hall or in her washing machine or on the photo frames. But most are really hidden in places where she won't look directly. Like in sculptures between the roots of her plants, between two coffee cups, in the pockets of her clean trousers, between her clean folded sheets, on top of the shower head, basically in every nook and cranny of the house I could find. They are always hidden at height because she regularly babysits our toddler and I don't want him to be able to swallow them. You would think that 200 ducks is a lot, but I recently ordered a new bag because there are so many places I can still hide some. The revenge part has failed a bit because she loves it. Every time she finds one, she's laughing and we get a photo of the found duck. Edit. The giving junk thing has been going on ever since I left my parents' house, so around 15 years ago, long before the death of my dad last year. And yes, I have tried everything, from refusing to accept it to throwing it away in her bin. It just doesn't click for her that if she finds something, it doesn't mean that I can use it. She had told me a few times that it is junk that she's giving me. The current situation is that if I don't accept it, she stores it for later. Read next visit or she takes it with her when she comes over for a visit. Edit 2. So many people add stuff to my story and think my mother is senile, a hoarder, or has problems throwing things away, but it's not like that at all, and I don't want people thinking that of my mom. Lol. She is way too kind for that. My mother is a healthy 64 years young independent woman capable of throwing stuff away. She has cleaned up a lot of stuff my dad collected over the years, like books, magazines, clothes, and everything that my dad bought double, which we only found out after his passing. Everything without real sentimental value or 0% usefulness has been thrown in the bin by her. The problem is with stuff that is between 5 and 1% usefulness, like a commenter said. Not the sentimental stuff, we went through that last year after my dad died, but things that are virtually useless and in most cases are. Things like appointment cards from 2006, 30 random keys, vacuum bags when she knows we have a Dyson because she bought one herself, she likes our Dyson so much, dried out paint bins, those plastic pots you get when you buy new plants to name a few others. Things most people know are junk but somehow she thinks are useful for me. She even said sometimes it's junk but might be useful for me. Stuff that, when I pointed out, she knows is stupid to give to me, like that appointment card from 2006. 
And yes, we are helping with clearing the house, whenever we can or she wants our help, obviously. But this is the Petty Revenge Reddit, not the look at me helping my mom Reddit, so I like to keep the story relevant to the revenge part. I absolutely love stories like this. It reminds me of one I read before where a son kept giving coffee mugs to the father and he would gift them to random people because he didn't want them. He was like an ornery older guy. It was really cute. Because even though it's petty revenge, it doesn't always have to be in a malicious way. It doesn't have to be done with malice. So it's really cute when this sort of thing happens. Down in the comments by Piso Tinkto. Your mother is getting a chuckle every time she finds one? Sounds like you brightened up her day to me. How petty becomes wholesome. I know a lot of you like the wholesome one, so I'm glad that there was one in here. One of those hidden gems that you find occasionally when reading these stories. Our next story today is by Illuminatus Prime. The Setup. Back at university again, a group of us like to dine together once a week along the Miracle Mile just off campus. One girl would only order off the appetizer section and then do the that looks good, can I have a bite routine until she had filled her plate. Everyone got tired of this, but she was otherwise kind and helpful, so we let it ride. The Revenge At one meal, she placed her order, grabbed her purse, and said she'd be right back. Our food was brought while she was gone. By the time she had got back, each of us had put something on her plate from our own. She thanked us, and we all started eating. When we were almost through, I nudged the guy next to me and said, She ate it. Pay up. He said, Later, and we both started laughing. The girl turned pale. What did you do to my food? What did you put in it? Oh my god, I think I'm going to be sick. Then she made quick time to the restroom and did not come out for several minutes. The spoiler. We had done nothing to her food. We only acted like we had. She was upset because her imagination got the better of her. The epilogue. It took a long time to convince her that everything was fine and we were only pulling a prank. After that, however, she would order her own meals and only mooch off our desserts. We could live with that. Honestly, OP, when she said, what did you do to my food? What did you put in it? I would have said, we didn't do anything to your food. We only did something to our food that's on your plate. Even if somebody's nice, that's an obnoxious thing to do at the dinner table, to take food off everybody else's plates until yours is full. Not cool. Not cool even if they're willingly giving it to you. I know quite a few people that don't even want to have their food touched, let alone taken, by somebody else. Our stories for today have come to a close. If you enjoy this content, please click like or subscribe. And if you want notifications when videos drop, you can click the little notification bell. Each of these things helps my channel grow, and it helps out immensely. Until we meet again, have a beautiful day.